Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about crime because I think that the future of humanity is inextricably linked with the future of crime. Hopefully, by the end of this talk, you will see that we are all criminals here. Let me ask you the first part of my statement, which is that we are all criminals. Anybody here a criminal? I can't really see, but please raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Not so many, not so many. Um, let me clarify. A criminal is someone who breaks the law. Now, I'm going to ask again. Anybody here ever broke the law? Anybody here ever got a speed ticket, parking ticket? Aha, I see more hands up. Anybody here ever smoked pot? Um, while well in high school had sex with a partner who was underage? Um, watch movies without caring about copyright issues? More hands up, please, please. Right, so I didn't ask that question about whether or not you are a criminal. Uh, to embarrass anyone. I asked it for two main reasons. First of all, I wanted to show that crime is a much more common thread that we actually think. Effectively, if we think about ourselves, every one of us here, at one point or another, broke the law. The other reason for asking this question is to show that in daily work routines, in our everyday activities, we don't actually think in terms of legal or illegal. We just keep on doing our work. We don't care about such artificial categories. Now, the meaning of crime has been altered by modernity. Modernity has changed the way we think about crime and has changed the patterns of crime. Do you remember Robin Hood, the guy who used to steal from the rich and give to the poor? I hope I didn't mix the two. Um, so, Nowadays, his means of action, as in riding his horse and using his arch to rob the rich and give to the poor, would be completely out of date. A modern Robin Hood would probably be hidden behind a computer screen committing bank fraud. That's not to mock such a symbol. I gave you this example to show that because of modernity, new crimes have appeared and old crimes maybe are not so loved by criminals as they were before. Now, if it's so difficult for us to even understand what a crime is, can you even begin to imagine how difficult it must be for the crime prevention establishment? Well, there are a few things that have changed the way we prevent crime in the past 20 years, let's say. The first thing that has altered the way we do crime prevention is 9-11. After 9-11, crime has been effectively re-dramatized in the sense that now we have started to live in what is known as the risk society. Um, the German sociologist Ulrich Beck coined this term. Um, basically, risk is relating to anxiety, is related to something that has not happened, but it might happen at any moment. Effectively, crime has gone out of its reality to go into potentiality. Now, that's why we are spending so much money on preventing things that we are afraid of. And I'm talking about terrorism, I'm talking about organized crime, I'm talking about corruption. In the past 20 years, these issues, preventing crime, organized crime, terrorism and corruption, have become industries. Let me just give you an example. Breiner showed that by 2003, corruption, anti-corruption was actually an industry worth about 100 million US dollars. By 2009, this was a multi-billion multi dollars industry. And you could probably guess that in this industry, the former Soviet countries and Central and Eastern Europe were valuable niche markets. Now, the other thing that has altered the way we do crime prevention and we think about crime effectively is the internet. Internet has created a new space of interaction, a space which is bound to be criminalized at some point. Let's think about YouTube. Now, when you go on YouTube, I'm sure everyone here is familiar with that. When you go on YouTube, that's a bit of a borderline space. It's a, it's a fantastic space, but you don't really know if you are committing a crime when you go on YouTube. For example, this conference is transmitted live on YouTube. Now, this is legal to watch, but there are other things that might not be legal. Um, according to YouTube statistics, every second is uploaded 
um, video content worth one hour of watching. Now, can you even begin to imagine how difficult it must be to police such a space? The other thing that has changed the way we think about crime and the way we try to prevent crime is the fact that we have become more reflexive human beings, challenging even the tradition understanding of crime and the tradition division, the traditional division between powers in the state or the role of state. And for this, I'm going to give you a pretty controversial example. And I'm talking about WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. I'm, I'm not here to give any sort of judgments about whether he was right or wrong in leaking confidential information. He might have said, uh, threatened the security of the state. But what I am here to say is that his actions actually challenge the meaning of transparency. We now think maybe in a different way about what the role of state is and how far security and the implications of security can go. Probably by now, you've guessed that crime, in my opinion, is inextricably linked to progress. And I'm saying that, and I'm going to give you an example. I'm saying that because I think all the social movements um, that the world has witnessed were somehow related to the idea of crime. Let's think about the suffragettes. Suffragettes were people trying to obtain the vote to uh, the right to vote for women. Now I know it might sound a bit awkward, but women only obtained the right to vote in France in 1945. And in the French Algeria, they got this right in 1958. It's, it's almost unbelievable for us today here to think that women wouldn't have the right to vote. But in order to obtain this right, suffragettes actually went through quite extreme length. And, um, for example, they went through hunger strikes, they chained themselves, um, they even, one of them tried to attack a king. Um, I, this wouldn't exactly be considered uh, smooth actions, let me put it like that. Um, which brings me to my last point. Do you remember how at the beginning of the talk I told you that we were all criminals and we should all be proud of it? Well, I hope I proved to you that we were all criminals, whether we know it or we don't know it, whether we care or we don't care. But let me get to my second point, that we should all be proud of it. I'm going to give you some names now, and I'm going to show you that these names have two things in common. And the names that, I'm, that I have in mind, actually, are Jesus, Gandhi, Nelson Mandela. Now, what these three people have in common are the fact that they are leading leaders, moral leaders of this world. They have pushed humanity forward, but they were also criminals. And in this sense, I think by being here tonight, by breaking boundaries of thinking, by choosing paths that haven't really been taken before, I think we are all criminals, and I think we should all be proud of it. I quite like the company, so thank you very much.